Hey, praise the Lord. It's Brother Clinton here once again. Welcome back to the Word Prophet Channel, a Christian ministry dedicated to the purpose of teaching the Word of God to the people in the churches of God so that we can go back to serving God in spirit and in truth, just like Jesus Christ commanded. You know, a while back, I think it was a couple of months ago, I began a verse-by-verse -verse study of 1 John with you and never actually finished it because the Lord had me to change the subject and move on to some other things in sort of a parenthetical way. And now, if God wills, I'd like to continue with you in the fourth chapter uh, of 1 John, where we left off before we got to the end of the third chapter. So if you have your Holy Bible, King James Version, let's open up to 1 John chapter 4, and let's get blessed by the reading of the Word of God. Amen. We ended in the end of chapter 3, and I just want to re review the last verse of chapter 3 with you. John said, And he that keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him, and he in him. And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Praise the Lord. And pretty much the whole third chapter talked about that. We talked about that a lot. How that uh, whoso keepeth his commandments dwelleth in him. And that those people that are not keeping the commandments of God are not dwelling in him. He's not dwelling in them. They don't know him. And he doesn't know them. He knows who they are, but he doesn't know them. And so... If people say that they're walking with Jesus Christ, but yet they're not abiding in Him, they're not keeping His commandments, then, then they're not abiding in Him. Because the Bible says in 1 John 2, 6, He that saith he abideth in Him ought himself also so to walk even as He walked. And so if you are in Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ is in you, then you are walking like He walked and you're not living in sin and you're not a sinner anymore. You're a saint. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If you don't know what I mean by this, Please go back to the beginning of 1 John, and you'll understand. And when I first opened this book to you, this, this book of 1 John, I explained to you that those people in the various denominations that have not obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ and that have been taught a false trinity of gods, they don't, they're not going to understand this letter. Because this letter is not a theological masterpiece. It is a letter written by one man of God to some other man of God. And it is perfectly simple. It doesn't need to be uh, figured out through theology. In fact, you will never figure it out through theology. But if you will obey God and obey the gospel of Christ, even as Jesus said, if any man will obey God, he will know of the doctrine, whether it be of myself or whether it be of God. And if you want to know of the doctrine of Christ, you've got to obey Jesus Christ. That's the first and foremost thing. And then if you will obey him and obey the gospel that his apostles preached to be saved, then this letter is perfectly simple. There are no hard-to-figure-out verses. It's very simple. It's just a very simple conversation between one man of God and some other man of God. So having said that, let's continue in, in chapter 4, verse 1. Remember that he said in the last verse, And hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he hath given us. Praise the Lord. Those of us who are in Christ Jesus and Jesus Christ is in us, we receive the Holy Ghost, we speak with other tongues and prophesy, and we walk according to the Spirit instead of according to the flesh. And that's how we're going to inherit the kingdom of God. So now he says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Okay, praise the Lord. So there's a video on this channel, there's more than one actually, that, that talks about not everyone that has the Holy Ghost is a Christian. Okay? Not everyone that has the Holy Ghost is a Christian. Anybody with faith can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. That doesn't mean that they're a Christian. Okay, um, If you're not born of the Word of God, if you're not born of God and you can't hear His Word, then having the Holy Ghost is not going to make you a Christian. It's just going to make you be able to speak with tongues and prophesy. But, you know, as the Lord said, many will come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have we cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then he will profess unto them, I never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And so there are many who will come to you saying that they are Christians. There are many who will come to you saying that they've received the Holy Ghost. But they are not of the Lord. They're not born of his word. And remember, the word of God is spirit and life. Jesus said, the words that I speak unto you, in John chapter 6, he said, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You see, when I hold up this Bible in the beginning of, of my videos and I say that, that teaching the Word of God to the, to the people in the churches of God, I hold up this Bible. This Bible is not the Word of God. This Bible is a paper book. 
that can be taken and thrown into the fire. The Word of God is the words that are written on the paper in this book. Okay, That's the Word of God. It is spirit and life. So this book is not the Word of God. This book is a book. All right? It's paper. You could, If you were a wicked person, you could tear it up. You could throw it in a meat grinder. You could throw it in the fire and destroy it. But the Word of God cannot be destroyed. The Word of God is the words that are written on the pages in this book. And they are spirit and they are life. And if you are begotten of this Word, then you are of God. And then when you receive the Holy Ghost, He will lead you into all truth, as He promised, as Jesus promised. But if you're not born of this Word, if you're not born again, then receiving the Holy Ghost is not going to lead you into all truth because you can't hear the truth. Do you understand that? If you're born of God's Word, then you do. And if you're not, you're kind of going, what is this guy talking about? Well, that was necessary for me to set forth in order to, to understand what we're about to read. He said, Beloved, Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. All right, well, Brother Clinton, or, or Brother John, you might say, how do we try the spirits? Well, here's how. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. I want you to pay particular attention here, okay? Because many of you, well, actually, I, I shouldn't say many of you, all of us, including me, all of us have been raised up in a Babylonian system of religion that was false, created to be false on purpose, and created to deceive us so that even if we read the Bible, we would not understand it because we already come to it with preconceived notions that were taught to us by our old mother Babylon. You see, and we've got to be washed from that. We've got to be washed from that. And that's why Paul said in Ephesians 5.26 that Jesus Christ is washing his bride with water by the word. Not the water of the word. The word isn't water. But washing of water by the Word. In other words, by the Word of God, we are being washed in the same way that a dirty plate might be washed with water. All the filth is coming off of it so that it is clean and ready for use. And that's what the Word of God does for us, if we will read it and believe it as it is written. Let's go on. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Okay, This is how you can know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Okay. Now, many of us have read this many times before, but we've never really perceived it as it was written. All right, and you know me, if, you, if you're familiar with me and you're familiar with this ministry, you know that I'm not a theologian, although I used to be, but Jesus saved me, praise the Lord, and now I'm a Christian. And I don't use theology, and I don't use Greek and Hebrew to try to twist the meaning of words around to accommodate doctrines that are not in the Bible. I just teach you what is written in the Holy Bible in English, because that's the language that you and I are speaking, English, and that's the language that our Bible has been translated into. So... And we know that this letter was originally written in Greek. That doesn't really matter because we have it translated for us in English. And it was translated correctly. So, hereby know ye the Spirit of God, said the Apostle. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. What in the world was John saying? Well, if we look around, we can see people that are like Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, Catholics, uh, you know, people that belong to various cults like that. And, and if we ask them, can you say that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh? They'll say, sure, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. If you ask a Mormon, has Jesus Christ come in the flesh? They'll say, well, yes, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. But we know that a Mormon is not a Christian and that the Jesus Christ they're talking about is not the same Jesus Christ that we're talking about. So they can say the words, but that's not what they're confessing. The same with the Jehovah's Witness, the same with the Catholic, the same with the Baptist, okay? the same with the Lutheran. People that belong to the Roman Catholic horror, both Catholics and Protestants, don't know who Jesus Christ is because they have been taught that God is a trinity of persons. Oh no, Brother Clinton, here you go with that trinity stuff again. Well, yes, and it's at the heart of understanding the scripture to understand and to know that there is no triune God. That's one of the things that we have to be washed from, that our mother Babylon taught us all of our lives. Our old mother from our old family, when we were part of Adam's family. They're creepy and they're kooky, mysterious and spooky, right? 
Hereby know ye the Spirit of God, said John. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. He did not say, notice that he did not say, every spirit that is able to say the words, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is of God. He didn't say that. He said, confesseth, every spirit that confesseth. Now, you don't have to be a Greek scholar to understand that the word confesseth in the English language is, it is in the tense of a continual action. It is something that is continually done. Jesus Christ said, if you confess me before men, then I will confess you before my Father. All right, And he wasn't referring to one act in, in, in time where you're in a church meeting and you say, I confess that Jesus is Lord, and then all of a sudden you're a Christian, like the, 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 the ridiculous fables that they tell you in church, and they tell you now, you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, now you're a Christian. Well, that's a lie. Okay, you're not a Christian from accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, because there is no such thing as accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, except in the mind of lost theologians and religious people, but it, it's not written in the Scripture anywhere. And so those who confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh are not those who, who are able to say those words. It is those people that are confessing that truth on a daily basis to people around them. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. Okay. Now that we've got that established, what does Jesus Christ has come in the flesh mean? Well, that again is something that Trinitarians cannot understand. And cult members like people in, in, the, in the Mormon church that believe that there are two gods, and Jehovah's Witnesses that believe that there are two gods, and the Trinitarians that believe that there are three gods. Okay, There aren't three gods, and there aren't two gods, and Jesus Christ isn't one of two or three gods. Jesus Christ is the living God, the almighty God, the Father, who made the heavens and the earth, and who begat a son, that's why he's called the Father, and he begat a son and called his son by his own name. So the Son of God is called Jesus Christ because his Father is called Jesus Christ. This is why the scripture says Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever. And this is why the scripture says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Because that name is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the name of the Son of God because Jesus Christ is the name of the Father who sent him. And the Holy Ghost is the Father who sent him. Which is why the Bible says that the Holy Ghost is called Jesus Christ. Okay, so there is no Trinity, there is no triune God. It's very important for us to understand. And now understanding that, that as the scripture says, there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Now we can understand what John was talking about when he said, Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. This means different things to different people, but to a Christian, it means that the Almighty God, whose name is Jesus Christ, has come in the flesh, manifesting himself in the body of his Son, who is also called Jesus Christ. Manifesting his name to the world. But if you're a Trinitarian, you believe that a different God called Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. You believe that a God called God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, was come in the flesh. In fact, you believe even more ridiculous things than that, with all due respect. You believe that this God actually became a man. But there is no, number one, there is no God the Son, that God doesn't exist. And number two, God did not become a man. God has never become a man. God is not a man, has never been a man and will never be a man. God is a spirit, and they that worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. This is what Jesus said. And when Jesus was praying in John 17, verse 3, while speaking to his Father and my Father, his God and my God, he said, And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. You see, so the Son of God said to his Father and his God that he was the only true God that the God he was praying to was the only true God. So the one who was praying to him cannot be a God as well. He cannot be co-equal with him, co-eternal with him, or co-existent with him. Because if that was the case, then he would be lying when he said that his father was the only true God. You see? But he wasn't lying, of course. And the one he was praying to is the only true God. And the one who was praying to him is a man, not a God. And in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God was manifest in the flesh. The deity of the Son of God 
is the Father who sent him. And the Father who sent him is named Jesus Christ. His name has always been Jesus Christ, and it was revealed incrementally throughout history until the time when he came in the flesh. And it is continually being revealed and shall be revealed even further, as the scripture says, Jehovah Shammah, in the last verse of Ezekiel and in Revelation 3.12. The name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, um, and my new name, says the Lord Jesus Christ. So, having said that, let's go back to 1 John 4, 2. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. This is what John is talking about. When he says confesseth, he's talking about a continual act of doing something. This is how people behave that have the Spirit of God. They confess that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay, this is how you will know the Spirit of God in a person. Because you will hear that person constantly confessing with his mouth the fact that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And Jesus Christ has come in the flesh means the Almighty God, pardon me, who was manifest in the flesh. It's just that simple. You know, people have a problem with this in another place where John wrote in, in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. They don't understand that. They, they're imagining words that aren't there, and they're doing that because our old mother Babylon taught us to imagine things that aren't there. And she taught us to imagine that the word word is actually the word Christ, or the word son. And she taught us to imagine that the word is the son of God. But the Bible doesn't say that at all. It doesn't even suggest that. The Bible says the word was God. Why can't we understand that? There's only one God. He's the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the, the maker of heaven and earth. He is the Word. The Word is Him. And then in the 14th verse it says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now again, the, our, our old mother Babylon taught us to imagine that the Word means the Son, and it doesn't. It means the Word, and the Word was God. The Word wasn't God the Son. How do, I, how do I know the Word wasn't God the Son? Because God the Son doesn't exist. There is no such thing. There is no such God. The only God there is, according to the testimony of Jesus Christ our Lord, the only true God is the Father to whom He prayed. And so knowing that, the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. It doesn't say the Word became a man. The Word did not become a man, but the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. You see, as of. I'm not going to go there because that's a whole different teaching. But people, when, when we understand who Jesus Christ is, the scripture just opens up to us. If we continue in that trinity lie or the bi-unity lie of the of the Mormons and the Jehovah's Witnesses, then we'll always be confused about who Jesus Christ is and what the Scripture is saying. Because the Scripture is written to people that are born of the Word of God and who know the Lord Jesus Christ. And so if you don't know Him, the Scripture is and will always be a mystery to you. Until you come to the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. And it, it, like I keep saying, it's all summed up in that one beautiful sentence that Paul wrote in 1 Timothy 2.5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. One God who is a spirit, one Son of God who is a man, period. End of story. It's just that simple. So those that confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, these are the people that are walking around confessing with their mouth that the Almighty God has come in the flesh and that his name is Jesus Christ. And he made manifest his name by means of his Son, who is also called Jesus Christ. This is what John was talking about. And if you're a Christian, if you know him, then this doesn't need to be explained to you. But the thing is that most people, the vast majority of people in the churches these days, are not Christians. They don't know who Jesus Christ is, and they don't know how to become a Christian. All they know is the stuff that they've been taught by their seminary and pastors. What do I mean by seminary and pastors? I've said this a lot too, and I'll say it again. Professional pastors who graduate from a seminary are not men of God. 
Seminaries are Jesuit institutions. All seminaries, every single one, there is no exception. It doesn't matter which denomination you go to. All seminaries are run by the Jesuit order of Rome, and they were created and instituted and are continually being used for the purpose of creating false pastors that will that are that are filled with false doctrine to go into the churches and preach falsehood to the people. They preach a little bit about Jesus Christ and then a little bit of the lies that they were taught in seminary. And they truly believe those lies. They were deceived themselves, and so they go forth deceiving others. That's what a seminarian pastor is, or a professional pastor. Okay, a pastor that is called of God didn't go to a seminary. A pastor that is called of God would never go to a seminary. And if he ever did go to a seminary, he would wind up dropping out in the first week because of the ridiculous lies that they teach there. And it doesn't matter what denomination it is. They all teach different lies. You know, a Pentecostal seminary teaches different lies than a Lutheran seminary, and they teach different lies than a Catholic seminary, and they teach different lies than a Mormon seminary, and they teach different lies than a Baptist seminary. It's, it's, it's different lies, but it's all the same system. It's just like a smorgasbord. You can choose whichever pack of lies you want, whichever pack of lies suits you best. You know, that's why people go church shopping, because they don't want to seek God in His Word. They, want, they already have their preconceived notion, and they're trying to find a church that agrees with what they already believe. And then they sit down and get comfortable, and then they perish. But getting back to what we were talking about, a seminarian pastor has been deceived. There is no such thing as a seminarian pastor who is called of God. And there is no such thing as a seminarian pastor who is a brother in Jesus Christ. And they're not confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. They're confessing that a different Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. And although that is a subtle truth, a subtle deception, I should say, it is a very important deception. Because when you say Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, if you're talking about a God called God the Son, the second person of the Trinity, then you're not talking about my Lord Jesus Christ because that's not who he is. You're talking about a God that doesn't exist. So you can say the same words that I'm saying. You can say the words, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, but that doesn't mean that you're of the Spirit of God. Because if the words that you're speaking mean something different to you than what they mean to a Christian, then you're not of the Spirit of God. Okay, I think we've built on, the, on this verse long enough, and I hope that, that I've given a clear understanding to all those of you out there who are, who are studying along with me. So let's read from the beginning again. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Praise the Lord. So religious people and devils can say the words, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. But if they're not talking about the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who is called by his Father's name, then they're not talking about the same Jesus Christ. And they're deceiving you. And this is something that you have to learn to understand and to be able to use in order to discern who is of God and who is not of God. And when someone comes to you talking about Jesus Christ, the very first thing that you need to establish is who are we talking about when we use the name Jesus Christ? Let's, let's talk for a little bit and, and see if we're both talking about the same Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and if you can do that and if you can establish that you're both talking about the same Jesus Christ, then, praise the Lord, then you know that that person is from God. Then you know that that person has a revelation of who Jesus Christ is. But if not, then you'll have the opportunity to teach that person, if that person will be open to teaching. Praise the Lord. Because not everybody that is under the spirit of Antichrist is purposely serving Antichrist. Most of them are deceived, and they're just deceived because nobody has ever taught them. And, be, of course, because they haven't sought God and His Word and been taught of God. So we who are in the faith, we need to be patient and kind and compassionate with those that are out of the way. And remember that we were once in that same position. We were once wearing those same Trinitarian shoes. And so we have to understand that we didn't learn what we learned in a day or in an hour. And most likely they're not going to learn in an hour either. And you'll have to have some patience in explaining things to them, sharing the word of God with them and praying for them. And 
you know, most of them won't ever come to the knowledge of the truth, but some of them will. And some of them will only if we are patient in fishing. You know, when you're fishing, I don't know how many of you are used to fishing. I haven't been fishing since I was a little kid, but fishing requires patience. Okay, if you're not patient, you're not going to catch any fish at all. If you're sitting in the boat with your line in the water and, and you know, after 30 seconds you start screaming at the fish, they're all going to swim away. You know, you lean over the boat like, what's the matter with you guys? It's a worm. You just, uh, just eat it. Just take it. They're all going to swim away. So you have to be patient and wait for the fish to, to bite. You see, and so it is with the Word of God. When you speak the Word of God, people are not going to hear it right away. A lot of times they're not. Sometimes they will. But a lot of times they're not. And so you have to be patient, my brethren. You have to be patient and compassionate. Like the Lord has been with you and me, so we must be with others as well. So it's one thing to discern that other people have the spirit of Antichrist. It's, it's another thing to disdain them because of that, as if they were the enemy, because they're not the enemy. The one who's deceived them is the enemy. And our job is to rescue the captives, to set the captives free, not to stomp on the captives and treat them like our enemies. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. So let's go on. John said in verse 4, John chapter 4, verse 4, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Okay, Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. This is a verse of the scripture that is quoted very often, and, and it's quoted in places where it really doesn't belong and pertain to things that it really doesn't pertain to when people quote it. But this is what John was talking about. Ye are of God, little children. Uh, the, the, the word ye is a, is a uh, second person personal pronoun. It means a uh, second person plural, personal pronoun. It means that John was speaking to more than one person. Okay, He was speaking to the recipients of this letter, and they were his children. They were his disciples. They were Christians. They knew who Jesus Christ was and is. And they understood these things, and it didn't take 26 minutes for somebody to explain to them um, what John wrote in the first three verses, because they already understood it. Praise the Lord. And so he said, ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Okay, now look, ye and them are in the same sentence. Ye refers to those of us who are in the church of Jesus Christ, and them refers to the religious people that are of the spirit of Antichrist, that don't know who Jesus Christ is, and don't confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And so he said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. How is it that we have overcome them? It is that God has lifted us up out of the miry clay and set us up upon a rock so that we can see all around us. If you're sinking in the miry clay, you can't see anything around you. You're just gasping for air. But if someone pulls you up out of that miry clay and sets you upon a rock, now you have a vantage point where you can see the entire battlefield. You can see exactly where everybody is, you can see exactly what's going on, and you can navigate perfectly because you have full, uh, full sir, uh, is it circumference? Full, the full um, radius of vision. Praise the Lord. Because God has pulled you up out of the miry clay and set you upon a rock. You have overcome them. You are above them. Okay, I'm not saying you're above them to cause you to be conceited like you're better than they are, because you're not. But you're physically in a place where you're above them if you're up on a rock. And that, and that way you have the vantage point and you have overcome them because they're down there in the ground, on the ground, scratching around in the mud. And you are up on a rock where you can see everything that is going on. And therefore, you have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Okay, and he that is in you is Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. He that is in you is Jesus Christ. Now, here's something that I, I I didn't really want to talk about, but I have to talk about it just briefly. And I'm going to be very careful when I do it. Because we want to be very careful that we don't blaspheme the spirit of the living God. Okay? But I want to tell you something. Even though there are lots of people that have the Holy Ghost that are not Christians, the Holy Ghost that is in them is not a devil. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the Spirit of Jesus Christ, which has been poured out. But the people that don't know Him are not going to follow the leading of His Spirit. Uh, there are other people that are or may be filled with other spirits that are not the Holy Spirit. Okay, And I'm not going to try to distinguish which one it is and which one it isn't, because I don't want to blaspheme the Holy Ghost. But maybe there are people that speak with other tongues uh, by, by the power of devils. That's certainly possible. 
Okay, but the, when when the Bible says that they are of the spirit of Antichrist, okay, that says, and this is that spirit of Antichrist, where if you have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. This is not talking about the spirit that they have received. It is talking about the spirit that they are of. Now. Let me say that again, just so I can make myself clear. It is not talking about the spirit that they have received. It is talking about the spirit that they are of. All right? If you have the Holy Ghost, then if you're born of God, then you are of the Spirit of God. But if you have the Holy Ghost and you're not born of God, then you are of the spirit of Antichrist. Anti means against. Okay? So it's possible that people have the Holy Ghost but yet they're against Christ, or they're antichrist, because they're not born of the word of God. See, God's word is not in them. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Ye have not my Father's word abiding in you. And therefore, they, they, they had the scriptures memorized backwards and forwards, but they didn't understand them, and they couldn't hear them when Jesus was speaking them. He said, Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. That's the only reason, because the words that I'm speaking are very plain, and if you can't hear them, if you don't understand what I'm saying, it's because you can't hear my words, Jesus said to them. And so, those that are of the spirit of Antichrist, let's not say, because John wasn't saying, that they have received a spirit of devils. Because the, the spirit that they have received is likely the Holy Ghost. It is the spirit of the living God. So let's not ever set ourselves forth to call the Spirit of God a devil. Let's not ever do that. In fact, let's fear to do that so that we may never ever even come close to doing that. But the Spirit of Antichrist that John was talking about is not the Spirit that they have received. It is the Spirit that they are of. Now, let me explain. Spirit is a word that means life. Okay, The Spirit that is in something is the life that is in something. These two words are synonymous. They mean the same thing. Okay. The Spirit of God is the life of God. The Spirit of man is the life of man. The Spirit of a plant is the life that is in that plant. Okay, The Spirit of something, when we say the Spirit of something, that means the same thing as the life of something, or the life that is in something, or that which makes it animated. So, people who haven't received the Holy Ghost still have a spirit. They have a human spirit. Okay. God breathed the breath of life into Adam's nostrils and he became a living soul. And a soul, a living soul, has a spirit. The word living in the phrase living soul means that that soul has spirit. It's living. It has spirit. It's animated. It's alive. That's what the word spirit means. This will help you greatly if you will grasp this. It's very simple. Okay. So, the spirit of Antichrist is not the spirit that they have received. It is the manner of spirit that they are of. Just like the difference between Cain and Abel. Cain was of one manner of spirit. Abel was of a different manner of spirit. Neither one of them, as far as we know, had received the Holy Ghost. Neither one of them had received the Spirit of God, but they had a spirit in them. Their own spirit, their human spirit. And Cain had one type of spirit, and Abel had another type of spirit. This is the way that they were born. This is the way that they came into the world. This is the seed that they were of. Cain was of one seed. Abel was of another seed. Even though they both came from the same parents physically, they were of two different seeds spiritually. And there's a video on this channel called something like Two Vines and Two Seeds, Cain and Abel, or something like that. And you're welcome to look that up. And if you don't know where it is, leave a comment. And I'll be happy to... to uh, to, to leave you a link to it. But please don't leave a comment saying, I'd like to see the video, please, because I won't know which video you're talking about. You have to explain to me what you're, what you're talking about, what you're asking for in the comment, and then I'll be happy to help you. But the spirit of Antichrist is the manner of spirit that a person is of. It is not talking about whether or not he has received the Holy Spirit of God. That's different. Okay, I hope that I've explained that sufficiently. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he said, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Praise the Lord. If you are one of the happy recipients of this letter, 
then greater is he that is in you, which is the spirit of Jesus Christ, than he that is in the world, which is the spirit of Antichrist. <coughs> Pardon me. Verse 5, they are of the world. Now there is so much revelation right here. I highly recommend that you memorize verses 1 through 6 of this chapter. Memorize them and keep them in your heart always. There is so much revelation here that will help you. It's kind of like having night goggles when you're walking in a jungle in the nighttime, which is how we are in this world, um, to be able to see through special goggles in the jungle at night so that you can see everything that's going on around you and avoid you know, the, the baboons and the snakes and, the, and the, the poisonous insects and the traps and things like that. You can see those things with your special goggles at night in the jungle, but if you don't have your special goggles, then you're just walking in pitch darkness and you have no idea what's in front of you or behind you or sneaking up on you. And that's a pretty scary situation. So, <coughs> pardon me. So because God has lifted us up out of the miry clay and set us upon a rock, now we can see the whole battlefield, and we have, we have overcome them, because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He says, they that are they are of the world. They are of the world. And this is what I was just talking to you about. The spirit of Antichrist is not the spirit that they have received. It is the spirit that they are of. Of, that funny little word, O-F. It, 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 it means to say the, the generation of a person or the the uh, the origin the origin of a person where that person came from where that person's roots are okay every plant has roots that go down into the ground well where are that person's roots are they in Jesus Christ or are they in Antichrist and many people talk the talk but they don't walk the walk so talking the talk is one thing walking the walk is another thing all right there are many people in the churches who have learned how to talk like a Christian to a degree, but they don't have the revelation inside of them. And so talking to them for a few minutes will reveal to you what manner of spirit they are really of. And then you'll have the opportunity to share the Word of God with them and try to teach them. And if they will be taught, praise the Lord. And if they won't, then your hands are clean and you move on. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So he says, they are of the world. Just like Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees, ye are of the world. Ye are from beneath. I am from above. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. This is so very important, my brethren. My brethren, this is so very important. People will come to you saying that they are Christians, and the words that come out of their mouths will make manifest whether or not they are your brother or sister. And so many times, if you look at the videos on this channel and scroll down and look at some of the comments, you'll see how theologians and church-educated people will come to me, and they will fully reject the word of the living God, and they will reprove me or think to reprove me by the teachings of their denomination or by the commentaries of some theologian. They're actually thinking in their own mind that they are correcting the word of God with theology. Uh, there was a man who wrote to me the other day, just yesterday, the day before. He was a, a theologian, a very confused theologian, and the, the message that he commented on was very simple. It was by grace through faith. It was a video that I just uploaded two or three days ago, I think. Um, you know, by grace through faith, it's very simple. I shared how in, in, in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, and 9, where we are saved by grace through faith. And then I shared from Acts chapter 19 how the recipients of that letter were saved. And, the, uh, and it was just about a five-minute video, I think, or maybe it was a 35-minute one. Uh, I made two versions of it. And, um, and this man wrote to me just just totally telling me that I was a false prophet and a false teacher and that I needed to learn from, from him and from his school of thinking. And, and he, the way that he was speaking was not as the oracles of God. It was all about theology. And, and the reason I'm sharing this with you is because of what John said here. They are of the world, therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. Hallelujah. But those of us who are of God, we speak as the oracles of God, as we are commanded not only because we're commanded to do so, but because it's in us, because we're born of that word. That's the seed that we were born from and the bread that we feed from daily, that we feed on daily. And so it's in us. And so we speak as the oracles of God. But they are of the world. You see, they have a lot of the word of God memorized, but because and, and they profess to be Christians, but they are of the world. 
Therefore, speak they of the world. And they'll come to you and they say, well, you're, trying to, you're, you're preaching a works-based salvation. Wait a minute, I, I just quoted to you the word of God. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And they come back with, well, you're preaching a works-based salvation. R really? Okay, well, I'm preaching the same gospel that the apostles of Jesus Christ preached. Well, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're saying that Jesus' work on the cross was, was insufficient. Really, how do you imagine that I said that? I didn't say that at all. All I said was what the Word of God says. Well, you're, you know, you're, you're a legalist, and you're judgmental, and, you're, and they'll go on and on and on. They speak as the world. They refuse to speak as the oracles of God because they cannot hear the Word of God. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. The people of their own kind, they hear them. When they speak that kind of nonsense to the other people that gather together with them in their thing called a church, they hear them. They hear each other. They agree with each other. They hear each other's words. But when they speak to us, it's just nonsense. And, and when we speak to them, to them it's just nonsense because we speak as the oracles of God. This is how you know, brothers and sisters. This is how you know. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. And he that is not of God heareth not us. It's really just that simple, boys and girls, brothers and sisters. It's really just that simple. And there was one of you who wrote me the other day, a dear brother who I've been in communication with for many months, and, and he wrote to me despondent, like, how can they... How can they not believe? Why, do, why is it that when I preach the word of God to them, they tell me that I'm a legalist? You know, and he was talking about the particular uh, issue of, of divorce and remarriage. And, and he's sharing the word of God with people about that in his, in, his, uh, in his natural family. And, you know, they come back and they say, well, you're a legalist and we're under grace. And, we're, you know, that was then and this is now. And, you know, God loves us. And they come back with a million, ex million excuses not to believe the word. Well, this is why, my brother, because they cannot hear. The word of God because it's not in them we are of God he that knoweth God heareth us and he that is not of God heareth not us let this sink down into your spirit it is reality and when you see it come to pass before your eyes you will marvel at the mighty power of the word of God which is sharper than any two-edged sword it is sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder between the soul and the spirit and between the joints and the marrow. You can speak the word of God in broad daylight to religious people and they will not hear it. They will not hear it. They can't hear it. It goes right over their head. And they will come back with nonsense and theology and all the garbage that they learned from their, from their seminarian pastor. And they'll say, well, well, wait a minute, you can't tell me I need to be baptized because the Bible says by grace we are saved. Well, yeah, but you're reading a letter that's not addressed to you. <laughs> but they can't hear that. They don't understand that. They just want to pick a word or pick a verse out of the Bible and stick it on themselves when they've never obeyed the gospel of Christ. So you see, they are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. My brothers and my sisters, this will save you so much time and grief and trouble when you understand the simple truth that Brother John, the Apostle of Jesus Christ, was sharing with us in this letter. This is how you know the difference between Christ and Antichrist. This is how you know the difference between the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They are of the world. Therefore speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. God the Father, the Almighty God, Jesus Christ, came in the flesh, begat a son, called him by his own name, and dwelt in his son and made manifest his name to the world. 
every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, like the Trinitarians who will tell you that God the Son was come in the flesh, God the Son became a man, that's not the same thing as confessing that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that Jesus Christ is a spirit being that was created by Jehovah. That's not the same as saying Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And the Mormons, I don't even know for sure what they say, but it doesn't really matter because they have a different Jesus anyway. Because their, their whole religion was based upon the, the testimony of a false prophet who was a Freemason, who received a revelation from a devil and thought it was another testament of Jesus Christ. Which is ridiculous, because right in the beginning, right in the cover of their book, it says another New Testament of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Where does it say in the Holy Bible anywhere that there would be another New Testament? It doesn't. In fact, the Bible specifically says that it is finished. When Jesus Christ gave up the ghost, it is finished. Uh, he didn't say anything about another New Testament. But anyway, that's, I digress. All those people have their doctrines and their Jesuses that they preach. And even Paul wrote, if someone comes to you preaching another Jesus or another gospel or another spirit. And so even in the days of Paul, there were other people preaching other Jesuses, just like there are today. In fact, the ones that are being preached today are the same as the ones that were being preached back then. The, the religions are called by different names. It's just an ages-old heresy that they changed the name of the religion. That's all. And so he the, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. You see, and those that hear the words of God, they are of God. And if they're not of God, if they're of the world, then they speak as the world, and the world heareth them. But we are of God. You see, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us, and he that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. This is your tool, my brothers and my sisters, to use to navigate in this world, to understand clearly the difference between who is of Christ and who is of Antichrist. And I'm going to cut this video short right here and I'm going to make it in, in segments. I'm going to make this the first segment because I just want you to meditate on these things for a little while. Blessed be the name of the Lord and God willing we'll continue with 1 John chapter 4 um, very shortly. Ho hopefully I'm going to just do another video real quick here after I cut this one off. But, but take some time to meditate on this please. Pray about it. And write down these six verses of the scripture. 1 John chapter 4, verses 1 through 6. Write them down on a piece of paper. Stick it in your pocket. And pull it out of your pocket all day long. And read it. And get these verses in your heart. This is a key. I did this a long, long time ago. God put it in my heart to memorize these six verses of the scripture. And it has been such a blessing to me. And it is a key that will let me through any door on this battlefield. Any door on this battlefield. It will make manifest to me what is behind any door on this battlefield. And so will it do for you. There's so much revelation in the writings of John. Pun not intended. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May this be a blessing to you, my brothers and my sisters. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.